Hello, this is Alex Eames from Raspi.tv. Hello, today I'm having a look at sound cards for the Raspberry Pi. I've got DACs and amps and digiamps and a huge range from four different suppliers. Have a look at this lot. We've got the Pimeroni Fat DAC, which we'll cover when we do the Zero Shootout. Eight boards from Just Boom. Three from Hi-Fi Berry. And six from IQ Audio. Thank you to Pimeroni, Just Boom, Hi-Fi Berry and IQ Audio for providing the review samples. It's going to take quite some time to get through this lot, and I'm not going to do it all in one go. But today, I'm going to look at the straightforward DACs. So in this video, I'm comparing the IQ Audio Pi DAC Plus, the Hi-Fi Berry DAC Plus Standard, and the Just Boom DAC Hat. All three use the same chip to generate the sound. So each of these three boards is, is exactly as it was supplied, except uh, the Hi-Fi Berry doesn't come with a headphone jack as standard. I had to find and solder on my own. But some people will prefer to have one already soldered on it. The IQ Audio Pi DAC Plus is £30. The Just Boom DAC Hat is £30. And the Hi-Fi Berry DAC Plus Standard is £22.90. Uh, as far as I can tell, there isn't a headphone amp on here, whereas there is on the there is circuitry on the Just Boom and on the IQ Audio. But having soldered a headphone jack on there, it does work, so it may not be necessary if you don't want one. So these are ideal if you want to put your Raspberry Pi sound into another device at the line in level or if you want to listen directly through the headphone socket. But if you want to power speakers directly, you need to plug in an amp. The IQ Audio amp sits on top with these two headers here, and you connect your speakers there and an external power supply. So that's what that stack of boards looks like on top of the Pi. The Just Boom DAC hat has these springy connectors which connect to these pads on the underside of the amp. And these cutouts fit everything perfectly so when you squeeze those contact is made and the hardware standoffs will hold everything in correct alignment. This gives you quite a compact board stack. So because these DACs all use the same chip, I figured it might be interesting to have a look at the user experience. How good the documentation is, how easy it is to find, how long it takes to get set up. So I made a new SD card with the latest Raspbian on for each of the three boards, and then followed the instructions I found on their website. Let's have a look at how I got on. So first off, I'm going to say, they all sounded really, really good. I couldn't tell them apart. I couldn't tell one from another in terms of whether it was better or worse. And that wasn't very far off my expectations, because they do use the same chip. I'm not an audiophile. I wasn't really expecting to be able to give you an audiophile's guide to this, which is why I had a look mostly at the user experience. And there were some differences here. So this is the IQ Audio website. You can click on here to go to the download section. And this is the manual. If you click here, then it opens up the manual for you. And it's a very nice and comprehensive guide. It shows all of the products. It gives you an overview of the range and how, how they work, how they fit together, how to put them together how to install and put the cases together and then eventually you get to the section where how to configure Raspbian. Now IQ Audio do offer several pre-configured SD card images but I preferred to do a test on a standard Raspbian installation because I thought that would be the, the best way of ensuring a level playing field. So in each case 
I did a fresh installation, updated, upgraded to the latest version at the time I did the test, which was at the end of November. And then I went to the instructions on each individual site. And these are the ones from IQ Audio. So as you can see, this is the point we've reached. We've got the update, up, upgrade done. And the next thing we had to do was edit the boot config file and add a line. I think it was that one. And th then we had to disable this line in the config.txt as well. And then reboot with the card attached. And then it shows you how to diagnose if it's there. And that was a useful and helpful command. And then it shows you how to control it using Alza Mixer, which settings it needs to be on, and how to control the volume using Alza Mixer, which is a, a useful command line mixing tool. And then after installing mPlayer, you can actually use this command to grab a stream from internet radio station and test that the card is working properly. And there's a troubleshooting section further on should you have any issues. Now I got from, from starting with a fully updated, upgraded system, plugging everything together, switch on to getting a sound out of it through my headphones was 13 minutes and 33 seconds thanks to this documentation which I thought was pretty good. And the sound quality was absolutely excellent. I used mPlayer to listen to the Haydn Trumpet Concerto played by Tina Helseth, and it sounded absolutely fantastic. So that was that one. Straightforward, clear instructions, comprehensive, very, very good, very impressed. IQ Audio also have some standard SD card images, Rune and OSMC, and some other test files that you can download to play about with. I didn't need any of those. How does the Just Boom offering stack up? Let's have a look. Let's go to their site, click on resources, get started. It shows you a list of products you can view the guides for. So let's choose the DAC hat, which is the one that we are looking at now. And it shows you how to put it together, how to put it on the Pi and whether if you're adding an amp how to put that on as well then how to put the case together if you've got the case nice photos and right at the end it says os tutorials if you want to figure out how to customize for your own os and these are all of the os's that they are planning to have available for setup guides but they are not done yet even the Raspbian ones not done yet so how did I get it set up well mine didn't work out of the box the just boom are trying very hard to make theirs plug and play and I believe it will be plug and play in the not too distant future uh, using the hat EEPROM but for the moment it still needed for my review it still needed one line disabling in the config.txt just like we had to do with the IQ audio. So it was very, very nearly plug and play, but not quite. Uh, I managed to get some technical support from Aaron and Francesco on Twitter. And in the end, I did the same test that I did with the IQ audio, and it took about the same time to get a sound out of it, including installing mPlayer, and the sound quality was superb. I was very impressed with that indeed. The Haydn Trumpet Concerto sound beautiful. So as it stands, the Just Boom was slightly more plug and play than the IQ Audio was, but only really by one line. And having learnt some instructions about Alza Mixer and other things on the IQ Audio instructions, that was really useful and helpful when using the Just Boom as well. It's hard to give an exact figure for how long it took because I had to stop while I was waiting for help. So it did take about the same length of time as the IQ Audio one, and 
the setup steps I had to take were similar. The assembly instructions were really good and I expect the rest of the documentation will also be good when it comes out. I believe Francesco is working on that and I would expect if he's doing it that the documentation will be good. What about Hi-Fi Berry? Let's take a look at their site. So if we scroll to the bottom we can find the documentation section. So let's have a look. Loads fairly fast. What we want to do is, so you've got all sorts of instructions about assembling the cases. But the bit we want is configuring. Uh, that one's been moved somewhere else. I don't know why they couldn't have linked it directly there. Okay, so this looks familiar. How to configure Linux 4. So it's the same old story. You have to disable this line in config.txt and insert the one which is appropriate for the product you've bought. Now I got confused to begin with and I put this one in because I saw DAC plus here. Didn't realize it was actually DAC plus light. So the instructions weren't quite idiot proof enough for this idiot, but what I was actually using was a DAC plus standard, so I should have put that line in config.txt. Unfortunately, that cost me about 15 minutes, but you could say that that's my own fault, but I would have possibly thought the way that line is done could be improved to be made more idiot proof. Certainly for this particular idiot anyway. I don't hold it against them. In the end, the setup was almost the same. They added this that gives you a way of permanently setting the sound if you need it. And apart from that, testing with M player. If you discount the fact that I lost 15 minutes because I misread the instructions, it took about the same length of time to set up as the other ones, about 13, 14, 15 minutes, and to get a sound out of it. And using the headphone jack, it sounded fine. It sounded good, couldn't tell it apart from the other ones, perhaps needed to be cranked up a little bit more on the volume because of the lack of the headphone amp, but other than that, the sound quality was fine. The Haydn Trumpet Concerto sounded lovely. So Hi-Fi Berry has pre-configured images for Raspbian and Rune as well. So which one would I pick? Well, it, to qualify, depends. If you're after the one with the lowest price, the Hi-Fi Berry is definitely the cheapest at £23, but it doesn't have a headphone amp if that matters to you. The audio quality on all of them was very good and I couldn't tell them apart. If documentation matters to you, then at the moment the IQ Audio has the best documentation. If plug and play is the most important thing to you, then I'd pick the Just Boom. But I wouldn't be surprised if before long they aren't all plug and play. So there you go, it's a qualified depends. Cheapest, Hi-Fi Berry. Best documentation, IQ Audio. Most plug and play, Just Boom. It just depends on your priorities in life. As always, you pay your money and takes your choice. I hope you've enjoyed this review as much as I've enjoyed listening to lots of music. This was Alex Eames for Raspire.tv. Thank you for watching.